The views and opinions of this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, let's take a look at the weather here as we get into the month of February. We continue our coverage at the agmarket.net Farming for Profit, Not Price Conference. And joining us now for our weekly weather update, Eric Snodgrass with Conduits. Good to see you in in person i, I mean we see each other every monday <laughs> behind a video screen but uh always good to catch up in person and uh, glad you could be here i know a lot of folks were very interested in what you had to say for your uh your longer range weather outlook here eric yeah i was curious how much they were weighing it against the groundhogs forecast <laughs> uh, so yeah you know the the, the 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 forecast of more winter i'm like well that was a no-brainer so good job on the ground i for getting that one because mm -hmm. we it's super mild now i mean i drove down down here on 24 i had my windows down from metropolis illinois all the way to nashville and uh it's i mean we got temperatures that are in the 70s uh it'll be in the 90s in texas but uh of course that doesn't last very long but you know what was interesting about this is the contrast we're having with january mm -hmm. and, and february and my hope and this is what i share with a lot of the folks in the meeting today was listen uh, we need the second half of this winter to to be honestly terrible because i don't like the fact that we still have all of this lingering dry soil issue this problem with drought in the southern plains that gets into parts of you know the sun belt into mexico and so we kind of made a narrative that if these things aren't taken care of in february march and april that we might have some some sort of risk going on so so the story is this this mild return of air Plus the contrast in Montana. I mean, I got Montana at minus one for a high mm. later this week with 90s in Texas. That's going to set up this temperature contrast. It's going to finally drive systems to return some snow to places that need it, some rain to other places. But the issue here is where it's not, and that is it's not in the south. It's I'm, let me forget, not in the southwest. So yeah, it's better for some, but it's just not the right full pattern to just blitz the United States with moisture going forward. So that's where we stand. And that's something too that I mean, kind of going back to what we talked about last week mm -hmm. and and what we've mentioned a few times, your drought concerns heading into spring planting but you know can you kind of you know talk about january to february and, and kind of looking at that narrative here and you know it just feels like we really got to see the the moves out of the southwest yes. that you kind of mentioned to really start to ramp up this precipitation flow that we need i say that but in the same breath i'll tell you there's probably a ton of people in that room that didn't like what I had to say if that occurs. And that is, if that does occur, mid-Mississippi Valley, lower Mississippi River Valley, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, we'll have a super wet spring. Mm. And so what will happen is, is we got this risk that that part of the, you know, the corn and soybean belt and that critical part of the Mid-South gets, gets wet and stormy early, tight windows come April, May. Whereas to the west and south of there, I'm going to talk about drought, drought creeping toward us which is the wrong combination. You don't want to have a spring where you can't get in the ground and you get in late or maybe you mud in and then we beat it with heat and drought late. And I just, it's not, this is not a slam dunk forecast. It's just there. And I, I told the folks today, I said, you want to know what the number is? The risk, the risk is 60%. Six and 10 times where I saw the sequence of events happening this time of year, we end up having problems. And, uh, but four in 10, it didn't. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that this is not a, you know, slam dunk guarantee forecast. And man, it would just be nice if we could get some negative news from somewhere else too. But in the near term, it seems to be that a lot of folks are going to be watching U.S. weather planting progress total acreage, which is going to be a mystery to me until someone like Matt Bennett tells me what it's really going to be. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, just understanding if there is going to be some sort of supply side shock in the U.S. next year based on weather. Yeah, and that's going to be a big key. You mentioned maybe a weather issue somewhere else. Yeah. Let's talk South America. Sure. And, and for weeks now, we've been worried about Argentina dryness. We've been watching the rains in central Brazil continue and continue. And there's been these these pieces here yeah. but is any of this coming together do we have a major problem as we get into february or not just not enough like so i looked at where there's drought in brazil there was a couple pockets in like rio grande do sol and parna but they're not sitting on top of the best farm ground and then you say well Mato Grosso do sol was super dry in january uh all right uh but Mato Grosso wasn't they were super wet and they've had their own issues with harvest. You've seen the numbers. They're behind, and therefore they're behind on the planting of safrina, but they're not outside of a crazy window where they can't make it up. So you go to Argentina. Where's the drought in Argentina? It's in the north. 
Cordoba is not a major drought. Cordoba is the Illinois and Iowa and Indiana of Argentina. Now, Buenos Aires matters. They've been a bit drier, but they got rain forecast coming. So it's this, this situation where we're not getting constructive interference, where things are adding up to make a problem down there. And until that starts to happen, which shoot, could we see an issue with Safrina crop? Maybe. But that's it's not even in the ground yet. So mm -hmm. we're not even really in a position to talk about it. Um, so... I can't, again, I can't find a really bullish story out of South America that the markets will move on. And I don't think the market's going to care right now about weather, given that this weekend we learned some interesting things about tariffs. Mm -hmm. I probably just could have sat down and I said, just bring the tariff guy back up. Let, let Dan talk about it, or, <laughs> you know, because the reality is, is that's probably going to be the biggest uh, bit of chaos we're going to go yeah. into this new week dealing with. Well, as we look across the rest of the weather landscape, I mean, what else is on your mind this week? What do you want folks to just keep an eye on here as we move forward, Eric. Yeah. So I'll tell you the long-term thing. Watch the Gulf of Alaska. If by May, I'm talking about that area cold, okay, then then this whole risk of 60%, it's going to change. It's going to go up. In the meantime, we do have a La Nina that's collapsing slowly. It's probably at its peak now. It's going to collapse. That's going to be critical. And then I know it's mild right now, Jesse, but man, do I got, I have got some cold air returning. And for once, we might actually have a link up with the polar vortex to bring it farther to the south. Do I think it lasts a long? No, I don't think it's a long duration event, but it's going to punch us with some cold air after giving us 70 degree days here to start this new week. So be prepared for rapidly changing temperatures. Give us a plug for the Ag Weather website. I yeah. know you got a ton of stuff on there for folks to take a look at every single day. Yes, I'm pretty pumped about it too. So May, or excuse me, March 1, we're going to be launching the next iteration of it. And there'll be an opportunity to sign up for our premium weather stuff. I've been building that new thing out. You're going to have access to stuff you didn't even know we could create. I'm pretty stoked about it. Uh, but it's just ag-wx.com. Whole new redesign, more easy, more mobile friendly. And, uh, you know, it's partnerships like I have with, uh, you know, this conference and with you and others that allow me to build this stuff. And so we'll keep building. Agweather.com, ag-wx.com. Eric Snodgrass with Conduit. Good to see you, buddy. And we'll talk to you next week. All right. Sounds good. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube.